Tom and Mark, what was their relationship like in the studio? How are they how are they together? If I think back, I feel like like Mark was completely ready at that point. Even though he was 17, 18. Like I felt like when he was in the mic, in front of the mic, he had the composure he needed. I felt like Tom was maybe just a little bit more of the understudy at that point. But I don't mean that in a negative way, right? Like Tom's songs are good. I... One of the things that I'm like most amazed with Tom about and very proud of what he's done is the Angels and Airwaves material. I love those records. I think they're fantastic and I think they have tons of imagination. To know that he's made those records after meeting him as a kid and making that punk rock, punk rock record together, that's a pretty huge deal, man. And I think it shows how much scope Tom has here, you know? I think he's a very gifted man. I think Mark is very gifted as well. I think at that point, Mark was maybe just a little bit more comfortable on his instrument. Tom was maybe a little less proficient with his instrument. And he, behind the microphone, maybe didn't have all of the composure that Mark had at the time. But you had to give the guy an A for effort. Like, he wanted to make a record. You know? And I think that he realized that Like they always say, when you join a band, you join a band with other guys who are just a little bit better than you. And I felt like maybe Tom was in that spot where maybe mentor's a strong word. Maybe they're just like school chums, you know? Yeah. But I think maybe he felt like he had an anchor there with with Mark. And I think that clearly as they developed as songwriters and producers in their own right, that there was a network of support there between the two of them, you know? And uh, and that was probably pretty helpful. And I think there was also competition there as far as writing goes. And I think there's, if you look at like a band like Husker Du or Bob Mould and Grant Hart were co-writers and you pretty much have equal amounts of each writer's songs on a record. I'm sure that there was, I, I can't speak to that, but I'm sure knowing as an artist myself, I'm sure that there was a little bit of that competition there too, which probably was a good thing in pushing their writing and growing their sound, you know? Yeah. But also, like, it can't be overlooked that, like, that sophomoric, you know, humor and that attitude that they probably took with them out of high school, right? that they never really lost that and they kept part of that. They realized that that was super, super important. It was almost more important than just what the band sounds like. It's like, you may, maybe they only have one joke, but it's a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Blake is definitely, you know, known for their antics as much as it is with, you know, with the music. Absolutely, right? And that's why, that's a big part of why kids love that band. Because they were entertaining. Because it's a party and you're all invited. You know, we're not here to tell you something. And that is part of the secret of the, that kind of success, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but I, I read a funny quote from Tom a little while back, and he said, he essentially said, yeah, we started a revolution. It was a pretty stupid revolution, but it was a revolution nonetheless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and I think that's a, that's a, that's a spot-on comment. Tom typically sings in a higher register than Mark. So when you were recording the band, did you have to set up the mics in a different fashion or anything different? Yeah, I probably actually set up one for each of them. I probably put whatever sounded good in front of uh, Tom, and I probably uh, put whatever sounded good in front of Mark. And I think if I recall, I might have used a U67 for Mark, and I might have used a C12A for Tom. I guess this is just more of a subjective question for you personally. Did you prefer you know, the songs that Tom was vocalist on or that Mark was the vocalist on? Um... Probably Mark, just because he's got a little bit more tone. I mean, they both melodically kind of sing the same way, you know? Those songs, the melodies only really ever have three or four notes. And you're just kind of bouncing around between those. I think with with Tom, he's like, if you just look at his physical makeup, right? He's a little thinner, he's a little slimmer, he's a little slighter. And so it's kind of hard to get that kind of tone out of your, your body. Mark is sort of a bigger guy with sort of, sort of more of a chest to him. So he's going to sound a, a little broader. Hmm. But what I would remark about that is just touching on that Angels and Airwaves thing again. Like, if I listen to those Angels and Airwaves records, like, I think his voice is perfectly suited to those songs. 
like every single one. Like it never sounds too edgy. And sometimes he is kind of belty, but, and it sits really, really good, you know? So I think they're both terrific singers in their own right. I don't think that's something that they were born naturally with. I think it's something they both had to work at to, to, to get to. So when you were in studio with, um, with Mark and with Tom, did you ever get that vibe that there was kind of a friendly rivalry between the two guys? I don't know that there was enough time for me to discern that. Like when I was speaking of what that relation, maybe what helped that relationship, I was kind of speaking more from my personal experience than trying to extrapolate from their, from, from their interactions. I kind of just seem to recall it also just kind of being like sort of back and forth. Okay. I'll sing a couple songs now. Okay. You got yours. I'll do a couple now, you know, kind of thing. Like it was just, it was just very back and forth. It was very workmanship, you know, because of the allotted time. And so, Maybe there wasn't that much time to explore those nuances, right? But you're also striking when the iron's hot and you're kind of bottling lightning when you're doing that. And that's where some of that energy came from, you know, and keeping it moving along. So there isn't too much time to think about it. When Tom left the band, was that surprising at all to you? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I think that what they had done was kind of worked out a formula that worked really well for them. So... Kind of to abandon that to me seemed like rash. You know, like maybe you could take a break and come back to it or something. But again, like, I don't know the background there. So I can't speak to what anybody's, you know, motivations, you know, what, what might have been. I was actually more surprised that they got somebody else in to play in the band. Like to get Skiba in to play in the band. That actually surprised me more. I thought the thing to do was, okay, well, you just play Mark songs. Oh, I got what you're saying. Okay. okay. Get a guitar player and just play Mark songs. So it was actually more of a surprise for them to do. Like, I don't know how it works with Skiba. Does Skiba play Tom songs? I've, I've seen him once with Skiba, and I, I think they did. Yeah, it was it was back in 2014, so this was also a while ago. But yeah, I, I do remember, I think they played a couple of the songs where you would have Tom's vocals. So yeah, I do think he was involved with uh, with that, yeah. Okay, so like maybe what they're doing is playing Mark songs and then Mark songs that have secondary Tom parts or trade-off parts. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you definitively if they play only songs that had Tom right. vocals. R- right, right. And so, the, so you could see why I, I sort of thought that could have been an approach, right? Uh, you know, just hire Dude X as the guitar player, keep all the focus on, on Mark. But bringing Skiba and you're bringing in another punk rock star. You know, I, I think I'm comfortable in saying that, you know, he's got a terrific band and writes great songs in his own right. And, and so you, you, it's a whole different dynamic. I think that's the thing that surprised me the most. Yeah. Do, do, do you have any sort of um, relationship with uh, Matt Skiba? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I have met him. I have met him because um, for about five minutes, I uh, uh, was running a, a, a bar business that I was involved in, in L.A., and he came by a couple of times and I never remembered him. So every time somebody came by, they had to go, oh, that's Matt Skiba. And then be, and he, Matt would go, oh, Steve, I remember you. We met before. I'm like, oh, Matt, cool. Yeah. Uh, I didn't remember meeting you last time or something or what you looked like. I didn't remember what he looked like or something like that. But I actually have met Matt Skiba a couple of times and he's a sweet guy. That's cool. Yeah. And there are rumors that Tom might rejoin Blink at some point. Do you think that's a natural thing that should happen or is that done? Oh, I mean, I think I, th- I think that'll probably happen at some point. Maybe not now. But maybe ten years down the road. You know, the guys are y- still they're still young, so you know they could do it. You know, they could do they could do that dash for cash right at the end. You know, and 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 you know what? They have great fans and people that love them and support them. People will come out and see some shows even when they're in their in their fifties. You know, or their sixties. Yeah. The question is, would Matt still be in the band if Tom comes back, or like, does he have to leave? Oh, I think he probably has to leave. I think that's probably how, I think that, I think that's probably how that goes down. And so when Blink ended for the first time, were you surprised at all by that? Maybe a little bit just because they had kind of taken it and sort of turned it into their own little cottage industry. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so when you've got something that's working that well, you tend to not disrupt And so maybe it was a little bit surprising in that sense, you know, but who's to know what goes on over years and years of touring and 
working together and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's just, unless you're a fly on the wall, you can't put those pieces together. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.